Hi everyone, welcome back to Build Your Own Interactive DSL. This is session five and today we talk about command line interfaces. This is the last uh, episode of the series, so we'll try to tie everything together in a nice way. The first step in making our uh, CLI uh, competitive with others uh, is to make it so that we can run scripts uh, that are defined in uh, uh, external uh, external file, files. So let's say we have a script.igol file where we uh, specify a set of igol commands. We want to be able to just run .igol script igol and that should run the script. Uh, as a matter of fact, we will be able to do a .igol call once we uh, compile our uh, script for release, but for the time being, we'll have a syntax like the one you can see on the screen here. So crystal source igol CLI, and then we will pass in the, the script. So how do we go about um, making this uh, real? Well, the first thing we need to do is we need to read the first argument from uh, from the from the command line. So the way of doing that, and that will be our potentially our file path. And the way we do this in Crystal is just by inspecting the constant variable argv, which is actually an array containing all the arguments passed in uh, on the command line. And so if we say argv zero, that will return the first argument uh, passed to the uh, to the igol command. Because we're not sure whether the user will uh, add the um, file name or not, because we don't know, depending on whether the argument is there, we will either run the script or start the REPL, we'll just add a question mark here so that an exception is not thrown whenever uh, the, the file path is not there. And now things are fairly straightforward. We'll want to check if the file path is defined. And if it is defined, then we'll uh, uh, run the script. And if it is not defined, then we will just go into REPL mode as we used to. Uh, and uh, the question now is, how do we run the script? Well, Crystal makes it very easy for us to uh, read each line of a, of a file. So if we just say file each line file path and then pass a block to this, what we'll have is the each line will be passed in uh, inside a variable input. And we can just do more or less what we were doing before. So we can just say run input. Let's see if this is what we want. And as you can see, there's no there's no output here. So if you recall, the REPL is what is actually printing the output coming from the runtime. So what we actually want to do is we want to store the output coming out of the runtime. And then we can either put the output, uh, which is OK, but also prints a couple of uh, empty uh, empty lines uh, whenever the whenever the output was supposed to be suppressed. So what we can also do is we can say put the output unless output is nil, in which case the output is going to be suppressed when uh, nil is returned by the by the runtime. And in case you're wondering, so this is what the script looks like. It's just a couple of variable assignments and then we're applying a pattern. And if I just add a show here, then we should also see the grid state at the end of the script, which is pretty amazing. Uh, if you notice, I've added a I've added support for uh, the semicolon to to suppress the returned uh, string by the by the runtime. So whenever the semicolon appears, the runtime will return a uh, nil rather than uh, the, the the string returned by the interpreter. So now that we added the ability for the users to run scripts from the command line, let's also implement another interesting feature, which is the one where the user can load a file from within the REPL itself. This is something very convenient because you might want to store a pretty complicated script in a file and just pull it back into the uh, into the REPL whenever, whenever you need to. It's also a way to keep things interactive. So we load from, from a file, but then we can keep on uh, operating on the on the state coming out of the script itself. And the, the challenge here, so given a requirement of uh, given the a, an instruction starting with the percent %load uh, command, we want the uh, REPL to load a file from, uh, from the file system. The question that we need to answer is where do we go and implement the logic for this uh, for this parsing and interpreting of the percent load. And it might be tempting to think about this 
uh, in relation to our specific DSL. But actually, if you think about it, the percent %load command doesn't have anything to do with the, with the language itself, but rather is a meta functionality provided by our, uh, our um, REPL. So the right place to implement this logic is the REPL itself. And how, where, what's the best place to actually uh, implement this logic? Well, if you look at our REPL CR, there's a bit where we process the user input provided uh, the, via the, the block passed by the, by the user. So it feels like this is the right place to operate because we can intercept the input coming from the user. So what we can say, for example, and I'm gonna keep things uh, simple uh, for now, is we're going to say, if the input starts with uh, the percent %load keyword, then we will load file. Otherwise, we will just uh, keep on uh, running the uh, command, uh, passing the, the command to the parser and interpreter and uh, uh, do what we used to do before. And if the, uh, now the question is, how do we go about loading the uh, commands from the file? Well, we've just done it a few, a few seconds ago. So what we want to do is we want to extract the file path into a variable. And in this case, it's going to be something we can extract with a bit of string manipulation, which uh, Crystal makes makes very easy for us. So we can call lchomp, lchop, which will remove uh, the percent load from the string. And then we can call strip, which will remove any white space surrounding the file path. And again, we're assuming that the user is well-intentioned and will not give us any, any gibberish. But even if, they, even if they do, we have some pretty robust error handling in the REPL itself. Once we have the file path, we can go for the same strategy we saw a few minutes ago and call file each line, pass in the file path, and then provide this with a block where we go provided each line, we call output equals process call line. And then if the output is actually something uh, different from nil, then we print it on the screen. Let's see this in action. So we just want to run the iGoal REPL and then we want to, for example, let's see uh, that the, the grid is empty and now we can do percent %load, which is a command which will go to the REPL rather than the uh, iGoal interpreter and say examples slash iGoal.script, sorry, the, the opposite script the iGoal, which is where the script is stored. And you can see uh, these outputs, the uh, feedback coming from the from each execute, command execution. And if I do a show now, you can see that the state has indeed been altered, which is absolutely great. So now that we have the basic functionality to allow the user to load scripts from um, either the command line or within the REPL, we can look into making the CLI slightly nicer for our users. And in particular, we'll try to interpret a couple of options. The requirement is to be able to provide contextual information with a help command and also to uh, manage to return the version of the, uh, the, the interpreter they're running because hopefully our DSL is going to be extremely successful and we're going to be releasing many, many versions of it. So the great news is we don't have to go uh, about uh, parsing options and uh, defining help messages ourselves, we can rely on a wealth of libraries actually that have been written in Crystal to uh, build CLIs in an effective way. Uh, but today we will focus on one called Clean, which I've been wanting to try uh, for a while. Uh, it's by a user called at Grandpa. Uh, I think I pretty much like the syntax. Uh, it heavily relies on, on macros, which will talk about uh, uh, later as well. It's also a great way of uh, remembering that Crystal has a growing community in Japan as well. So hi to all our Japanese friends. So let's see how we can uh, update our shard file to include uh, to include the dependency for Klim, which I've already copy pasted in time. We then need to remember to call shard to run shards install from the from the command line. 
And now that we have this, we can go back to our um, Eigel CLI and try to follow these the instructions. We won't need to wrap the um, uh, to wrap the CLI class into a module, but we will need a class indeed. I'm going to be calling this Eigel underscore um, CLI, and uh, we are going to include a main block, which is where all the Klim magic actually happens. And then we'll try to just follow along the instructions. So we'll have to provide a description for our tool. So this is the Eigel interpreter. Uh, and then we'll have to provide the usage. Let's follow along the uh, help support, uh, the help message provided in the example. So we'll say option and then file path which are both optional um, fields and then we'll have no options definitely a version a version is going to be say version uh, 0.1.0 for example and then we want to have no options but a single argument and the argument is going to be called file path and be of type string and it has a description which is we can say path to eigel script uh, and I think this is it and in terms of the default I won't be specifying any default I think the um, default is nil if the argument is not provided so we should be good now we have defined uh, let's say in a very declarative way the different um, components of our CLI we can define a run block which is where um, what will be run by the um, by the CLI and mind that we don't need to do any special handling of options in this particular case so we won't be needing uh, options but we will need args and then we will have to extract file path from args uh, dot file path which is a named argument which is very convenient and as i was mentioning version and uh, help are uh, special in the in in the way they are handled so we don't need to do the handling inside here uh, a couple of things to remember before we get compilation errors nothing wrong with that but we need to define the runtime within the run block because we are now inside a class definition so history file and runtime are out of scope and we'll do the same for we'll paste the history definition inside the REPL segment which is where the history file is relevant and a brief review and then I think we can try to run this so to run this we just say I go underscore CLI dot start and then passing the argv uh, array and then we can try and uh, run this now notice that I'm running crystal source I go CLI dot CR dash dash and then uh, a set of options I'm doing this because uh, up until crystal 0 34 you have to uh, prepend any argument or option that you're passing to the to the script with a double dash otherwise this will be interpreted like option and arguments to the crystal uh, command rather than to yours but of course once we've built our eagle CLI into an exec executable that's not going to be the case anymore so let's say we're doing this for for testing purposes and I seem to have forgotten something here. So on the argument, did I forget some comma? Argument first type string description colon. I've forgotten the colon. This is a and then main do expected. Uh, let me just check uh, 
forgot to, of course, extend uh, inherit from from Clint. And of course, we also need to acquire Clint. So if we try now and say crystal source eagle underscore CLI, and then pass a bunch of options, like for example, dash dash version, we get the version of our interpreter. Otherwise, if we say help, for example, we get a very nicely formatted help message, which is exactly what we were going for. So let's add one more uh, thing. So if we want to add a shorthand for our options, we can just add the short option and say this is dash V. We can do the same for help and say short dash H and this adds support for um, specifying the help option with a dash H or the version one with a dash V. Pretty amazing. So thanks, Klim. Now you might look at this main file and uh, be satisfied, or you might look at this main file and think that this is very specific to our eagle in interpreter. And if you think about all the work we've done so far, we've been trying to keep things uh, fairly general uh, in a way where we can plug in whatever implementation of an interactive DSL. So let's try and move into uncharted territory and do a bit of um, um, a, a bit of experimentation with, with macros here. Let me show you where I'd like to get with this. I would like to get to a point where I can say something like CLI dot run eagle where eagle is the name of a um, module really and then I'd like everything else to be done for us from the name of the uh, description to the in the description to the usage to the version itself to the um, actual definition of the runtime let's give this a try in order to define a macro, we need to be within a module. So I'm just going to define a module CLI here. And then, because I actually want to not have to implement anything else. And then inside the module, we'll define macro run, and then we will pass in a module. Module is a, a keyword in Crystal, so let's use MOD mod uh, to define this see how we are defining we're using eagle in these few places I am just going to replace this with a macro call to mod and if I run eagle But if I, okay, so find, it wants me to define this. Is this impressive? I think it is. And, you know, um, I do realize that, uh, for example, uh, we might want mod to be lowercase here. Um, we can do that. We can say stringify. Uh, low case, up case, down case, down case. Uh, and because this returns a string itself, I'm going to do this. Right. Uh, something. One, one more thing is the uh, the version. So at the moment, the version is. Um, something we are hard coding, but we don't have to. So we can say, go to the module, eagle, sorry, mod, and just call version on it. And this assumes that version is defined. So if it is not defined, we're going to have to get, uh, sorry, <laughs> of course, this is not going to be interpreted otherwise. If, if version is not defined, then we're going to get an error. But what we can do is we can go to 
um, our idle and just do module idle def self version and say return 0 0.1.1 0 and say this is the end and then the only requirement for our uh, module is that they provide two things oh, let me also try and change this to 0 2 to see that we're not lying perfect uh, and so so the module will require two methods to be implemented one is version and the other one is the runtime which is what we're calling here uh, when we initialize the the block that's it so why is this um, I, will, I will not say nice but why is this interesting well this is interesting because now we've defined um, a CLI module that doesn't have anything to do with the particular DSL we're going to plug into it and we can just define a DSL that provides a runtime and a version uh, method and that's enough to um, to let the user use our uh, our infrastructure so this is really it for today and it's also uh, the end of the of the series I hope you enjoyed this please let me know how you found this and uh, if you managed to actually build your interactive DSL uh, feel free to share it um, with with everyone on this on this channel uh, thanks again for watching and stay tuned for more crystal content